Hi, I'm Louise and I paint in watercolour. In this video I'll demonstrate some of the different edges that you can make in watercolour and I'll talk a bit about the planning I did before I painted these seagulls. Planning out your painting before you paint in watercolour is really important because watercolour is a transparent medium and you can't cover over your mistakes like you can with other mediums. So you really need to think about the process before you start painting. With this painting, the seagulls have a lot of white feathers and because of that, I wanted some colour on the background to define the edges of each bird. But I had to decide what colour I was going to use. I chose a greyed down blue for the background because I know that it's important to let one temperature dominate in your painting. The birds are mainly a cool grey, but they have a few brown feathers and their beaks and legs are orange. So the painting is mainly cool, but there's a hint of warmth there. I had to decide whether I wanted a warm background or a cool background. And I thought if I painted a warm colour on the background, then that would cover a similar area to the amount of cool grey that there is on the wings. And then I'd have a painting where the area of cool colour and the area of warm colour would be a similar size. Neither the warm colour nor the cool colour would dominate. So to be safe, I went with the blue for that reason. I chose Fabriano Artistico soft press watercolour paper for no particular reason other than for the fact that I enjoy painting on it. The main two colours I used in this painting were Windsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. People often ask me what colours I can't live without and those two colours are always on my list. So that was something that I didn't have to think about. French Ultramarine is a warm, transparent blue that granulates and it's the blue that I reach for more than any other. Burnt Sienna is a warm, transparent, earthy brown hue that I use in a lot of my paintings. The two colours look fabulous together and if you mix them, they make a range of gorgeous neutral greys that I use in many of my paintings. When I painted the seagulls, I made use of soft edges, hard edges, broken edges and lost edges. Soft edges, I usually paint on wet paper. Here I've wet the paper with water and then I paint straight on the wet surface and the paint bleeds and moves over the paper creating those soft edges around the outside. I also paint soft edges on dry paper, usually when it's a smaller area that I'm painting. I can soften an edge by running my damp brush across it a few times before it dries. I have a video demonstrating how to soften paint edges here on YouTube. Hard edges are quite straightforward. You paint wet paint on dry paper to achieve hard edges. And whatever mark you make will have hard edges around its perimeter. Broken edges are a bit different. They are often used to create texture. In this case, I painted the ground that the seagulls are standing on with broken edges. Broken edges are made by dry brushing the paint over the paper. When you dry brush with watercolour, the brush isn't completely dry. It's still got a little bit of moisture in it. Most of the water is taken out of it, but it is damp. When I painted the ground on my painting, I used the side of my round brush and I gently rubbed it over the paper and the brush skipped over the surface, creating some broken edges. The other edges I included in this painting were some lost edges. A lost edge is where the edge of an object or shape bleeds off into the area that surrounds it and you can't see it. It's suggested rather than painted in. I had to plan where I was going to put those lost edges before I started painting. I included those lost edges around the outside of the seagulls to help create the illusion of depth. Now I'm going to show you how I used all of those edges in the painting. This is the reference photo that I used for this painting. It was taken by Nikki Pay and I downloaded it from Pixabay. As I mentioned, because the seagulls have a lot of white feathers, the background forms the edge of them. When I paint the background on, I need to paint around them carefully. I mixed some burnt sienna into French ultramarine and I painted that colour onto the wet paper and I wet the background, not the birds. I was painting flat on my table, now I'm lifting the board off the table because I want the paint to flow up to the top right hand corner of the painting. 
Then I wet the background on the other side of the painting. I watered the paint down slightly here because I wanted it to be lighter in value. I wanted the darker, richer colour around the bird in the front. I used the paper towel to take off the excess paint from around the edge of the painting. I included some lost edges around the edge of the birds to help create some depth. I kept the paint away from those areas and here I'm using a clean flat brush to clean them up. The eyes I painted on dry paper. Here I'm painting a darker area in front of the eye. I put the paint on the paper and then I dip my brush in my water container and I dab it on my towel and then I use it slightly damp to soften the paint edges, to lighten the value and to spread the paint out slightly. Then I took some of that residue paint that was on my brush and I dabbed it around the eye on the dry paper. Because these marks are painted on the dry paper, they have hard edges and they're there to give the suggestion of some feathers. For this line of feathers that run behind the eye, I wanted soft edges there, so I wet the paper and I allowed the water on the paper to move the pigment and that gave me those loose soft edges that I wanted. I did the same thing here on the head. I wet the paper and I used the background colour. The water on the paper dispersed the pigment and it gave me those loose soft edges there that I wanted. And looking really carefully at the reference photo, I can see a little grey shadow on the side of the head there. So I've just painted some water on there. And here I've got the grey mixture again. I painted the wing in all at once with grey that I mixed from burnt sienna and French ultramarine. I wet this area where I'm painting now. I wanted a soft edge running along the top of the wing where the grey feathers meet the white feathers. And the easiest way for me to do that is to wet the paper first. And I made sure the paint edge was away from the edge of the water. Along here where the brush is now, I wanted a soft edge. The water on the paper extends up to here, so I've kept the paint line away from the edge of the water to avoid a hard paint edge. To add some detail and warmth to the wing feathers, I used burnt sienna and some sepia. Here I've got sepia. Where I saw soft edges on the wing feathers on the reference photo, I painted on wet paper. So here my paper is wet. And where I saw hard edges on the feathers, I painted on dry paper. Here I'm painting some grey onto the dry paper. I want a soft edge here as well, so I'm going to take the paint out of my brush and use it slightly damp to soften away that paint edge. And then I took my smaller brush and I painted some of the grey onto the feather above to create those little feather separations that you see. So that's on dry paper there as well. Here on these brown feathers, I wet each feather individually. I painted on some burnt sienna and I didn't take the burnt sienna all the way out to the outer edge. I wanted a soft edge where the burnt sienna met the white of the paper. Then I've just dropped a bit of sepia on top of the burnt sienna while the burnt sienna is still wet. With these little feathers here, they're brown but they have a white edge on them. I felt that the brown edge was hard so I didn't need to paint these ones on the wet paper. It's quite simple to paint the brown paint onto the dry paper and that gives me that clean, straight, hard edge around the outside edge of them. 
If you'd like to see the full length tutorial of this painting, it will be posted on my Patreon site in August. It's an hour and 37 minutes in length and I take you through the entire painting from start to finish. There are progress photos of my painting, a line drawing of the seagulls and a copy of my finished painting that you can download. Okay, this is my little number three brush. I'm drying it out on the towel and I'm going to pick up some of the sepia. I want to dry brush the ground underneath the feet of the seagulls. So there's a bit of moisture in my brush, not a lot, and I've picked up the paint and now I'm holding it on its side and I'm rubbing the side of the brush onto the dry paper. If you find it doesn't come off your brush, you might need a bit more moisture in it. This is called dry brushing, but you do need a little bit of moisture in your brush, otherwise the paint won't transfer onto the paper. You want the paint to skip across the surface of the paper, leaving a mark. If you find that you're fighting with it and it's not doing very much, you might need a bit more moisture in your brush. So keep reloading. And if you need to wet your brush again, wet it, but dry it on the towel and get most of the moisture out, but not all. I painted in the legs using a combination of hard and soft edges. And then I decided to come back and have a play with the ground underneath the seagull's feet. So I've just wet that area underneath that foot on the left. And I've got a bit of sepia here. Now I've got my zero brush and a bit more sepia. I felt that I needed more of a shadow underneath the feet. So that's why I've done that. I'll do the same thing here. I wet underneath the feet with water. And then some more sepia. And then that's created a shadow under the other two feet. Then I decided to pick up a bit more sepia and deepen the colour slightly. It's right underneath each of the feet. Then I stood back and looked at everything and decided I needed to increase the amount of dry brushing that I've got underneath the feet. So I got a bigger brush this time. This is my number seven. I wet it, dried it, and now I'm picking up the paint. I dab off some of the excess and I use the side of the brush to rub over the paper. Oh, that's better, I just flipped the brush over. The paint was on one side of it. Get a bit more paint, keep rubbing. And then I got impatient with that and felt that I wasn't doing enough with it. So I ended up wetting my brush. And I picked up a bit more sepia. Okay, so I've got the texture there from the dry brushing and now I've got a wet brush and some more sepia. So you'll see the texture through what I'm doing. It's only very pale. I just picked up a bit more paint then. I still like the look of that dry brushing, but I just wanted a bit more color. Spreading it out now, using the side of my brush still. It's mainly tinted water there. And then after I did that, I was happy with it. So there's only a tiny amount of colour on the brush. It's, like I said, mainly tinted water. I dried it off and removed my washi tape. And then I was quite happy with it. And there it is finished. I'm finally filming in my new studio for the first time and I can't wait to show you around. Thanks for watching. I hope I gave you a few useful tips in this video. Please give it a like because it helps the channel and make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Are we filming? Yeah. We're rolling. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm not allowed to move. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm, Lu no, that was awkward. Hi, I'm Louise, no, how do you say that? Hi, I'm Louise.
In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the different edges you can make in watercolour, and that sounded really awkward when I said edges. Planning out your painting, I just spat. It's important to let one temperature dom dominate in your painting. <clears throat> you have to get out there. <clears throat> 